Guys, this is Libby, and today I'm going to be talking about growing microorganisms and culturing microorganisms. So, cultures of microorganisms, or microorganisms that are grown in a lab, can be used to investigate the effects of antibiotics and disinfectants, which both kill bacteria. Microorganisms can be grown in two mediums, or materials, that contain everything that bacteria need to survive. So the first of these mediums is nutrient broth. Microorganisms can be grown within a solution of a nutrient broth. This contains carbohydrates as an energy source, minerals, and sometimes other chemicals. The second medium that can be used is agar gel plate. Microorganisms can be grown as colonies on an agar gel plate. These are all colonies in the image here. So bacteria can be cultured in several ways. So which of the following is not a method? So we know that they can be cultured in a nutrient broth solution, and we know they can be cultured on an agar in a Petri dish. And we, so we know that bacteria cannot be cultured in a warm, dry place. So what equation would be used to calculate the areas of bacteria killed by the antiseptic or antibiotic, and what would this indicate? So the equation which would be used to calculate this would be the area of a circle, A equals pi r squared. This is because the colonies on a Petri dish form circular shapes. And so by looking at the size of the colony and calculating the area of the circle, we can calculate this answer. So using it to recap on culturing microorganisms, using an agar plate, bacteria grow on agar plates because they can multiply quickly on these. So, cultures of bacteria can be used to investigate the effects of antibiotics and disinfectants. A substance that provide a culture is a substance that provides the nutrients for the artificial growth of bacteria and other cells, or as a nutrient such as a nutrient broth or agar in a petri dish. An agar is a jelly made from algae that is used to culture microorganisms. And a petri dish is a round, shallow dish used to grow bacteria. Antibiotics are medication used to kill disease causing bacteria inside the body. In the name, they are antibiotic, biotics being bacteria. So when growing cultures of bacteria, we provide conditions that are good for lots of different types of bacteria to grow. If bacteria that are not being investigated grow, then our investigation has been contaminated. The risks of contamination, well, as well as jeopardizing the results of the investigation, contamination is a serious health and safety risk, as it lets other potentially harmful bacteria grow. For example, they may cause a disease. So the potential sources of contamination may be from your skin, the air, soil, or water. And in order to prevent contamination, for example, if you were doing an investigation into antibiotics, for an investigation, you may want to use antibiotics to prevent contamination and also make sure the cultures must be pure. So they do not contain any bacteria that are not being investigated. So if cultures are growing, bacteria that are not being investigated are referred to as a contaminated culture. So potential sources of contamination are soil, water, our skin, or our hands, and air. So to recap on the equation, which might be used to calculate the areas of bacteria killed by the antiseptic or antibiotic, we know that we need to use the area for a circle. Area equals pi times radius squared. And the largest area which is cleared around the antibiotic indicates the most effective as it has killed the largest area of a colony. So in order to prevent contamination from as the four things we talked about before, skin, air, soil or water, aseptic, which means free from contamination techniques are used on all apparatus. These techniques kill and prevent the entry of unwanted bacteria into the experiment. They involve flames, so inoculation loops, which are tools used to transfer bacteria, for example, to an agar plate, must be used for a flame for sterilization, 
as the heat removes the bacteria. Using lids on your Petri dishes, this prevents air from getting into the Petri dish. The lid must be quickly removed and replaced when transferring bacteria to the agar using the inoculating loop. The lid should be taped on and the dish should be stored upside down to prevent condensation forming on the lid and then dripping onto the agar. So here we're preventing air which could contain bacteria and we're also preventing water which could contain bacteria from contaminating. Boiling. Solutions in agar must be boiled for sterilization. Again, this uses heat in order to kill bacteria. And temperature. In schools, the maximum temperature which cultures should be incubated is 25 degrees Celsius. This extra precaution reduces the risk of harmful bacteria growing, which might grow at a higher temperature. So why should a Petri dish be stored upside down? This is because we want to prevent condensation forming on the lid and then dripping onto the agar, contaminating the sample. So, as we've just discussed, the lid of a Petri dish containing a culture should be taped on in order to prevent any bacteria from entering from the air. So, potential sources of contamination include air, skin, soil and water. And it's important that aseptic techniques are employed to minimise the risk of contamination. OK, so that's everything for culturing microorganisms and the risks that are involved. Thank you for listening.